we're, we're back, back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you're back well that's your fault <laughs> we hope you're back because the, there was something that was informative for you yeah so last episode we spoke a lot about nectar plants and promised that this episode we would focus more on host plants yes and we had some really good feedback from our episode where we discussed that the host plant is like the baby nursery for the caterpillar and the nectar plants are like a restaurant for the butterfly that's right, mm -hmm. that's right. we would like to talk about a few of the butterflies that live near us uh, they may not be necessarily the exact butterflies you have in your garden, mm -hmm. but they share the same characteristics mm -hmm. in that the butterflies lay their eggs on a plant that the caterpillars can eat. Mm -hmm. Called a host plant. Host plant. <laughs> How many times shall we say it? <laughs> Nothing describes these butterflies and their host plants better than Farron's images. Oh, thank you. So let's take a look. Why don't we start with our favorite butterfly, the monarch? Mm -hmm. You know, we, t we told you all a lot about her in our movie, The Mystical Migration of the Monarch. So you know, she lays her eggs on milkweed. Uh, her host plant. That's right. Mm -hmm. There are over 100 species, so we obviously can't possibly cover that here. But we have picked several varieties just to show you how different one can be from the other. Oh, I, and I think we've succeeded at that. Yeah. I can't wait for you to see the different varieties that we've pulled out for you. Right. So we're starting here with Asclepius perennis. The common name is aquatic milkweed. It only grows about a foot and a half tall, has thin leaves and a tiny bloom, white bloom. You know, the blooms appear much larger than they actually are. They, they're the most delicate pink, mm -hmm. small little bloom. It's a beautiful flower. Right, it is. And here we have sandhill milkweed, which is Asclepius humistrata. And it's got broad leaves. In comparison, you wouldn't think they belong to the same family, but they do. My favorite of the humistrata is the pink veins running through it, which match the pink flower. Mm -hmm. It's a very unique looking milkweed. It is. And as we zoom into the bloom, you can see the tiny florets that the butterfly sips nectar from. Yeah. And you can see here that we have several mature monarch caterpillars enjoying this huge lush leaf of the humistrata yes. milkweed. So this is red ring milkweed. It's Asclepius variegata, and as we zoom into the bloom, you see the red collar, mm -hmm. little red ring around mm -hmm. the base of the bloom. Have you ever wondered who names these flowers? <laughs> Someone hey. with an imagination, I suppose. Here is tropical milkweed. Asclepius curasavica. It can grow up to three to four feet tall. Mm -hmm. And this particular variety has yellow blooms. But as we zoom in to this next variety of the tropical, it has red blooms mm -hmm. and is known as blood flower. And now we have the orange butterfly weed mm -hmm. called tuberosa. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a small, I, I would use the word squatty plant. Yes, it is. Yeah. Low to the ground. Yes. Next up is common milkweed, <laughs> and it is widespread, as the name suggests. Right. But this one grows very tall, four to six feet, mm -hmm. and the leaves are quite large, mm -hmm. so they can support a lot of caterpillars. So the last milkweed just shows how varied all of the milkweed species can be. Mm -hmm. Look at this milkweed. It's called balloon plant, among others. Hint, hint. Go look up the names. <laughs> You'll like this. Yes. Let's shift our focus to a totally different butterfly, mm -hmm. the swallowtail family. Oh, wow. These are a family of butterflies that are larger in size, very elegant flight, elegant markings. Some of the color appears to be airbrushed on the wings. Like the pipe vine. The pipe vine Precisely. swallowtail. Precisely. And as its name suggests, its host plant is the pipe vine. With these large heart-shaped leaves, it's a vine that will need support, like a trellis or a tree that you want to cover up for the summer. <laughs> Look how it lays its eggs underneath yes. the leaves. It lays its eggs in clusters beneath the leaves. Here are a few images of the caterpillars, which you can see are very different in appearance 
than the monarch yes. caterpillar. And look at the pattern they make. Yeah, they, de the leaves they, they decimate eat. the leaf as they go. Yes, and but they leave the veins. Yes. Uh huh. Very, very interesting. Yeah. The next is a spice bush swallowtail. Yeah. So plants in the laurel family are its host, but we're just going to focus on the spice bush. Well, and I love focusing on the spice bush because as it lays its tiny white eggs underneath the leaves and the caterpillar emerges, the caterpillar makes a very interesting cut. In this image, you're, you can see where it's got a jagged cut. Yeah. And unfortunately, what you see is that we have uncurled the uh -huh. leaf to reveal the caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as we let go of this, the leaf curls back around the caterpillar and completely hides it. It's, so it's one of its survival mechanisms. It's so cool. Ah. And look how it changes as it matures. I know, right? It almost ends up looking like a cartoon character. Yeah. Next is the black swallowtail. Its host plants are in the carrot family. Its caterpillar is also known as a parsley worm. You can see how it gets its name. Here it is, enjoying parsley leaves. And another of its host plants in the carrot family is fennel. And I don't even know if these are called leaves. I know. I think they're more like fronds. Oh, are they? Yeah. And in my garden, they prefer those fronds to my parsley. Yeah. They prefer the fennel they in my garden. They love the fennel. Mm-hmm. They lay single eggs, mm -hmm. and they, as they mature, they enjoy the flowers just as well as the leaves. Yes, look at this little guy munching away. Yeah. He reminds me of a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the giant swallowtail. So its host plants are in the citrus family, either in the wild mm -hmm. or cultivated right. citrus. And they will also lay a single egg on the leaf. And they like the newer, more tender leaves. That's right. So here's a first in star, a more mature one. And look at this particular caterpillar. It kind of looks like bird poop. I'll just say <laughs> it. <laughs> and here he is chowing down on a leaf. Yes. A totally different type of butterfly from the swallowtail is the common buckeye. Mm -hmm. And it's smaller than the swallowtail family mm -hmm. but look at its markings they're spectacular mm -hmm. and because of this the buckeye is a favorite among a lot of people so you can see that as the caterpillar begins to mature it starts out primarily black develops more orange and the host plant that i am most familiar with is the purple gerardia yeah and the last butterfly we'll feature today is the Gulf Fiddle Mm-hmm. Its host plant is the passion vine. Yes, which is so full of passion, it can grow up to 30 feet, meaning it will need a lot of support. That's true. It has a magnificent bloom. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, we thought it would be fun to share Farron's time-lapse video of the flower unfolding. And then, of course, the female has to mate in order to lay an egg. She curls her body, tucks the egg onto the tendril of the vine. Amazing. It is. Some real agility there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving right along. <laughs> and from the egg emerges an orange caterpillar yes. that has these black bristles spiky all over it as mm -hmm. a means of defense but if you've ever felt it they're soft are they yes you know it seems fitting to me uh -huh. that we would end this episode with the uh, gulf fritillary chrysalis mm -hmm. the end of the butterfly life cycle or is it the beginning <laughs> 
So y'all join us next episode where we will be talking about the other things you need to create a butterfly garden. Which butterflies do you have in your garden?